تبارك الله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل ذكره طمأنينة للقلوب وجلاء لها عنارين الذنوب ومطرة لوسواس الخناس المكذوب والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الداعي إلى كل فعل محبوب وأمر مطلوب وعلى آله وأصحابه المقتفين سبيله على خير أسلوب أما بعد فيقول رب تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المنزل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لانفضوا من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأمر فإذا عزمت فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين وقال تعالى الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon the believers to control anger. And he says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرَّةِ Those who spend in the path of Allah, hardship and in ease. And those who restrain their anger and who pardon people. And Allah loves the doers of good. Continuing today in our 16th lesson, on parent-child relationship and uquq al-walidain and birr al-walidain. In today's lesson, we continue from where we left off last week, where I painted the picture of the angry person, the selfie of the angry person, in that we recognize the effect of anger on the individual, our face, our tongue, our heart, on our bodies. And I read, went through the details that a person becomes, a, our beautiful face becomes ugly in anger. And we lose our sense of control in anger. And that loss of sense of, con- sense of control is linked to the fact that anger is from fire, heat. And just as we are required to control anger, to control fire. Fire is a good servant and a terrible master. If it, if, if we use, Allah has given us fire to use it, but when it goes out of control, then we know what happens. And this is why we teach our children to be careful with fire. And we have training about fire control and not playing with matches. And so it is for anger. Anger is also something that when it goes out of control, it can cause devastation, destruction to our lives and those and to the lives of those around us. And that was the picture I painted for you last week. The effect of anger on relationship and particularly in this relationship that we're discussing, this relationship of parent and child, which is the first place one is required to learn control, so to learn self-restraint, to learn how to control one's anger. Because Allah is calling our attention and He's saying, Look, you, um, that when they reach Al Hulum, and Hulum, as I said, has two meanings. One is to become balad, to become, to enter into puberty, to, to become matured. But also, Jadiram Bil Hilm. It is also required at that point to learn to control one's anger, one's emotion. Because if you don't, then what happens is that you will grow up with anger being ingrained in your psyche. And what happens is that entire societies develop this attachment, this habit, this way of treating anger, 
that it becomes glamorized and the person who has the greatest anger is seen as the biggest hero. And that causes problems in society. That problem in society is something that, that rooted this discord that you see in society and the prob- a lot of the problems that we face, societal problems today, can be traced back to the lack of control of anger. Young people are stabbing each other out of anger. They are, they are getting, they're losing their control of themselves and not having value of human life. And in a demonstration of their anger, they are lashing out at each other. Now, the place where it's supposed to start, the control, the training for the control of anger should begin with the first relationship. And what is the first relationship? The first relationship you have is with your parent. So if you learn to treat, to be able to control it, then, then you will be able to control it elsewhere. But if you fail in your ability to control your anger with your parents, and generally, as I said last week, that the definition of anger is sadr. It is the boiling that, that rises in the heart. It, it rises in the heart with the purpose of taking revenge. That is what anger does. It, it, it boils into your heart and pushes you to take revenge for something, for some injustice or some, something that you have seen that has been done wrong to you. You have perceived as being, doing wrong, as being done to you as wrong. And in relation to your parents, then that is very rare. Very rare. Except if the parent has lost the rahmah, the mercy that Allah has put in their heart, they can end up harming their, parent, their children. But this is very rare. It doesn't happen regularly. The natural tendency, the place where Allah keeps the heart of the parent is to be in total dedication and, and, and care and compassion and love for the child. And that's what usually happens. So, yes, often case that the, the parent has to be firm with the child for their own safety. If the parent does not shout at the child when it runs out in the road, then that child will never know about the danger of the road. Of not running. If that child is not harsh with the, if the parent is not harsh with the child when they do something wrong, when he puts his hand in the fire, when he plays with fire, then that child will not know right and wrong. They will not know boundaries. They will not grow up knowing what to do. So there are places where it has to be done. Now, if when you grow up, you go to a therapist and they tell you, well, oh, your parents shouted at you and that's why you have problems today, or your parents did so and so, then that creates reasons for intiqam, reasons for revenge. And once you have those reasons for revenge in your mind, provided to you by the therapist or whoever shaitan you are speaking to, once all of those are ready-made into your mind, then will every single interaction with the parent, the anger will then find a hook, find a place to go. That ghaliyan, that boiling in the chest, will then find something of intiqam, something of revenge to happen. Because the the focus of the mind is on revenge. That's what happens. You see, oh, the parents have done this to me. This is why I'm suffering from depression. I'm, uh, I have psychological illnesses because of the parent. And as I say, I'm say, I've repeated this several times before in the series, but I'm going to say it again. The largest study that was done on mental illness across the world, 72 countries and 30,000 people, the largest study ever done, in that they proved, it, the results were that people who spend time blaming their parents are more prone to mental illness. That's the verdict on it. That's the biggest meta-study that was ever conducted. And this is what is proven. So all the individual exercises that you will go through where people will tell you, oh, well, you know, you have to go and understand what your parents have done. Even if you're not, even if you don't confront them, you have to forgive them. Then that is an exercise for increasing your mental illness. Because you're destroying your, fo- your first source of security, of comfort that you ever had by, by assuming that your parents did something wrong to you. And that's the problem. So it is about changing one's perception. And just as you can change your perception to see your parents as being an object of revenge, you can also change your perception to see the other thing. You can also see the opposite to that. And that's what I want to focus today on, is to recognize that you can change your approach to anger, that the possibility of change, because there's two opinions in regard to this. One is that anger is something that you can take out. Some people believe that you can eradicate anger from an individual. And the other opinion, the other extreme, is that anger 
كالخلق in in al khuluq kal khalq that the your character is like your creation it can never be changed there's these two extreme opinions oh, both are weak as imam ghazali says that that a'lam annahu dhanna 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 dhannun annahu yatasawwar mahwa al ghadab bil kulliyah wa za'mu anna al riyadha that they claim that you can wipe it out completely of course some people lose their anger or they have misplaced anger and they they have become completely wiped out in terms of recognizing what is right and wrong these are this is an illness where you go to the extent of not having any ghira you know we become beghirat you know people are talking to our daughters or talking to her for in in strange ways and beghirati unfortunately there's no english word for ghirat in there's no english equivalent the closest i've come to is uh, protective jealousy that's that's the closest you can have is that when you you're supposed to be protective over certain things and that is called ghira If you lose that you do not have anger for those things then you will have it for 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 things that where it's not necessary and that's when it go it, it goes below the threshold of what's needed where you you need it to protect you ghira there is no there's no word for it in english now but then there's the other opinion that says that people think that you that oh wait, that's the person's character you cannot change it and that's not also true you can do it you can change and so if you and in order to change it what you've got to look at is the things that people get attached to your attachments the things that you love in this world and there are three categories of things we get attached to in the world that we love so al awwal huwa huwa daruratun fi haqq al kafati that all everyone have certain basic needs that they become attached to they it, the love of those things come into their heart kal kal qut wal maskan wa kal qut wal maskati wa wal malbas wa sihhat al badan فمن قصد بدنه بالضرب والجرح that whoever's بالجرح that whoever's if your your livelihood the things they place you your daily bread your your food your house your clothes these are basic necessities that you're attached to naturally so if someone comes and interrupts that or takes it from you then it is inevitable that you will become angry that your anger will be raised will be focused up to that but and then So, and the same goes for if someone comes and um, takes away your house take you out of your house and you you will you cannot but get angry about that the anger comes to that so that is the, at the basic level of necessity the things that are required for basic survival of the human being but then there's another level al qism al thani ma laysa daruriyan the 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 category that where you are superfluous things extra things that are not really necessary that and li ahadin min al khalq no one needs this kalja like status in society we all want status in society and 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 wal mal al kathir and then plenty wealth not just the necessary the necessary amount of wealth but abundance of wealth we want to be millionaires and billionaires if possible i want to have my own car i want to have my own plane and if you get your plane then you want a whole fleet of planes it is always more you know like rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that that law kana li ibn adam wadiyan min dahab that if a, the child of adam had an entire valley of gold arada an yakuna lahu wadiyan that he would want to have two valleys of gold wa lam yamla fahu illa turab and he will continue wanting more and more and more and his mouth will not be filled except with clay that is the thing that will eventually fill it to satisfaction because nothing else that's how we we are so the ja and status so he's saying wal ghilyan fa inna hadhihi al umur sarat mahbubatan bil adati wa ja wal jahl bi maqsud al umur hatta sara al dhahab wal fiddah mahbubayn fi anfusihima he said that with custom and with ignorance of the purpose of these things that what were these things why did they come into existence have led people to begin to think that even gold and silver was beloved the, in itself that we love gold and silver for in itself where in fact gold and silver is of no use if there is a famine and you have a ton of gold and someone has a glass of water that you need or a plate of food you will exchange it for it because it's of, it, it's no utilitarian value to it gold in that sense so he's saying wa aktharu ghadab an-nas and the most anger of people wa aktharu ghadab an-nas ala ma huwa ghayru daruri that the most anger anger that occurs in people's minds is for things 
that are not necessary, that are not essential to the survival of the human being. They're not absolutely essential to you. That these are the things that you do not need. Kaljah was seat, just as status in society and celebrity, what tasaddur fil masjid fil majalis and sitting in the at the head of a of a table, sitting in the head of a of a, of a gathering. Well, mubahat fil ilm and then showing off with your knowledge. فَمَنْ غَلَبَ هَذَا الْحُبَّ عَلَيْهِ فَلَا مَحَالَةَ يَغْضَبُ that the, the one on, in whose heart this kind of thing has become, the love of it has, be, has risen to such an extent, then this person will be angry. إِذَا ذَاحَمَهُ مُزَاحِمٌ إِذَا ذَاحَمَهُ مُزَاحِمٌ عَلَى التَّصَدُّرِ فِي الْمَحَافِلِ This person will get angry if someone sits above him in a, in a gathering. Because status is so important, which in fact it is not. But he is saying that this will happen. وَمَنْ, وَمَنْ, مَا, ومن لَا يُحِبُّ ذلك but the one who does not, whose love of status and station in society has not entered into his heart, then he wouldn't worry. He wouldn't be, it wouldn't bother him even if he has to sit in the line of the shoes. You know, the Sahaba was walking into the mosque and he heard the words Ijlis from Rasulullah and he sat near the shoes. Because they, the word, the obedience to Rasulullah was more. The value for the command of Rasulullah was such in the heart that it didn't matter whether he was sitting in the shoes or whether he was sitting in the front. What matters is that he was obedient to the word of Rasulullah So that's the second category. And the third category is Al-Qismu al ما يكون ضروري ضروريا في حق بعض الناس دون البعض that what is necessary for some people and not necessary for others كالكتاب مثلا في حق العالم like the books for an alim an alim the most important thing he wants is his books and to be careful about his books so if somebody comes and tears his books or, or damage his books then he gets angry about that but وكذلك أدواء الصناعة the things that you Use for your daily bread, your tools of your trade. Those things are necessary, but and because they are linked to the first category. What was the first category? Your survival, your musk and the, the, your food, your dwelling, your clothes. The, the basic necessities are linked to these things, so the, but they're not for everyone. Um, not everyone has these linkages. But how do you deal with it? And this is what we want to talk about today. The thing is that to see that you are able to change your 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 approach to it. As for the first one, القسم الأول فليست الرياضة فيها لينعدم غيظ القلب that the training in this about in your treatment in your, your relation with the first level of things is not that you will get rid of your, all your anger but you learn what you have ولكن لكي يقدر على أن لا يطيع الغضب that he does not follow yes, you will get angry if someone does that but you train yourself on not to follow not to obey your anger, not to obey your anger. Well, I استعمله في الظاهر, and then he does not allow it to come into his actions. إلا على حد يستحبه الشرع, except to that point where that Sharia allows it, ويستحسنه الأقل, and which is reasonably required, which is which is allowed reasonably, not to go out of reason with it. That's the first for the first category. As for the second category, القسم الثالث, الثاني. فيمكن التوصل بالرياضة إلى الانفكاك عن الغضب. That it is you are allowed to. طيب أما القسم الثاني and this is the one I'm saying أكثر الغضب عليه. This is the one. This category of things is the superfluous things that in our life we get angry about those things. So how do you do that? How do you treat that? Now, he said that it is possible. الانفكاك عن الغضب عليه إذ يمكن إخراج حبه من القلب. That you are able to deal with anger in relation to these superfluous things uh, in controlling anger because you are able to remove the love of these things, the attachment you have for these things from your heart. That he should know that the human being has to recognize that these superfluous things, these extra things that I want in my life, I want status in society and a large amount of wealth and all of that beyond my need, that these things he needs to recognize, you need to have a conversation with yourself, set yourself 
a standard and say, look, I don't really need this because my real destination, my place, my real place is in the grave. That's where I'll end up. And my dwelling is akhirah. And the things that will benefit me are the things. This is a passing stage we are in our life. We have to go. And the things that we will take from here are the good deeds. The things, the akhira, for the akhirah are the good deeds that we will take. So you have to take for what you need. Now, if a person has a beautiful garden and someone comes and rips up his flower bed or breaks his flowers, then he gets angry. But that is because he's attached to it. But if there's a dandelion growing, you know, a piece of weed growing in the garden and someone comes and rips that, it is his garden and the dandelion is from his garden, but someone comes and rips that, does he get angry? Because he has no attachment to the, to the weed. He has no attachment to that. So that's the difference between, yes, it's my garden, but someone comes and breaks my dandelion and I have no attachment to that, so he doesn't get angry about that. But then there are other things that we can change. Like if, imagine two people have needles. And if I take a needle and stick it in your arm, that would be painful and you would be, it would lead to anger. But the doctor does the same thing. He takes a needle and sticks it into your arm and you do not get angry with the doctor. Why? We do not get angry with the doctor because we have shifted our purpose. We have seen something higher. We have seen a higher purpose in what, what the doctor is doing. If we say, oh, this doctor is that's going, this dentist that's going to drill my tooth. This is painful. Why are you causing me pain? And you allow your anger to erupt on that. Then you will become you know, toothless. The point is that we have to be able to shift the anger. If someone kills, if we have a sheep. Imagine, this is the example that he gives. I'm summarizing this now. He's saying that if, he, if, the, if a person has a sheep and someone slaughters the sheep, uh, kills the sheep, you will get angry. But we take the sheep when it's time to eat the sheep. We take the sheep to the butcher and the, the abattoir, the people, they slaughter the sheep. But we don't get angry with the, with the person who is killing the sheep. What's the difference? The difference is that we have, sh we have shifted our understanding. We have, we, have, we, have looked, we have shifted the focus of our, our value to, from one thing to another. And this is what, by seeing the true nature of things, we will be able to shift from being angry over trivial things of this dunya. And as he said, aktharul ghadabi, that the most of the anger is, is on these extra superfluous things that we don't really need but we are angry someone walks in front of us someone sits in front of us someone uh, doesn't speak to us by mistake or maybe someone ignores us how dare they speak to me like this and we do this in front of our parents how dare you speak to me like this we say this today nowadays when i'm getting reports parents are saying if you hear the words that my son is using to me and my daughter is using to me it is like if I am a beggar in the house and they're shouting so much. That is what's happening today. So if we forget, if we forget that this relationship, this failure to collect, to control the anger in, these, in this first relationship, then we will fail at all others. And even if we seem to be succeeding outside while we fail at home with our parents, know that you're not succeeding at all. That this is a this is a, a a delusion to think that you're oh you're successful outside but I can treat my parents however I want inside in the house then know that there is a that Allah has instructed Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that kullu dunubi yuakhiru Allah that Allah re makes the consequence of your actions for whatever you do the sin of it whatever sin you have committed. He may leave it for akhirah, whatever you've done, Ill, uh, whatever you've done in this world, illa walidain, except harshness to parents, except the shredding of the heart of the parents. The punishment, the tragedy of it begins in this world. It might not be happening today, but tomorrow it might start. And who knows when? So if we allow our anger to get out of control and we conceive these messages from shaitan and the followers of shaitan that somehow our parents were angry or did wrong things to us and therefore we are justified in our anger towards the parent then we should know that we are exposing ourselves to the anger that is over and above all anger and that is the anger of allah like i said last week when that sahaba asked mal shiddatu what is the severity what's the most severe thing in the world Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ashiddatu, the most severe thing in the world, 
is Allah. It's the anger of Allah. And when he asked, how should I protect myself from the ghadab of Allah, from the anger of Allah, he was told, he said, La taghdab. You do not get angry. You do not foster your own anger. Don't quench your anger. Don't allow your anger to reach to that stage. That is the thing that will protect you. So, the message today is that if you can ignore these superfluous things or restructure your, your understanding of, apart from the basic necessities, the things that we usually get angry about are the superfluous things, our status in society and extra things that we need, those things we get angry with our parents because they're not giving us enough inheritance or they're not doing, they're not doing enough for us and they're not paying attention to us and all these superfluous things that we want from our parents and are being angry for them, against them through either false memories, things that we have misconstrued. We should know that this will destroy your life here and there in, in the next world. As for if you are able to do this and change, and not only at the individual level, you can change a society. It starts at the individual level, but then society can change. You know, there are societal changes in the perception of things they are angry about. We, we, we seem to, when we indulge in places where people are angry about certain things, then it spreads. Like I said last week, that fire, like fire spreads, it's contagious. When the fire is burning, then it burns the things around it, and then the fire spreads. Anger is something like that as well. And you can have societal anger. You know, a few, uh, not too long ago, there was um, societal anger against a small number of women covering their face in China. There was so much so, the anger was so much that if that women, there was, this was seen, there was 0.01% of women who, did, who covered their face. And this was so terrible that they were cutting skirts of women. That, that look, because if you cover your face, this will be, this is backward. If you cover your face, this will be something against our modern society. If you cover your face, and everyone saw that this will destroy society, this will destroy our civilization, because women are covering them their face, that this is all backward. And three weeks later, one billion people are covering their face, and everybody is happy about it. So that's transformation. We're covering our face today. Everyone is covering the face and nobody is worrying now about civilization being destroyed by the covering of the face. So that's transformation of anger to recognizing the importance of it. So we can change, society can change, but we are to change individually. And we start, where we start is with our family, that if we fail with our parents, Allah fi ridal walid, the, the pleasure of Allah is with the pleasure of the parent. Al walid, Al-Umm Walid Wal-Walid Walid Al-Ab Walid Walidan Wahuma Walidan They are both Walid So if you The pleasure of Allah Is in the pleasure of the parent And the Sakhatullah Sakhatullah Fi Sakhatil Sakhatullah Fi Sakhatil Walid The anger is in the anger Of the parents So today's message was To recognize That you can change Not to think that Oh I am so Because there are lots of people Who say I just can't take it I just can't take it I just You know this is Yes you can But you haven't tried we have to try we have to try to control because we may not have done it at the time when we were supposed to do it when at the time of puberty that's when when Allah says that's when we were supposed to do it if we have fostered anger and anger is now part of our personality and it's ingrained in our psyche now is the time to decide to change it because you can the word the sentence that I just can't take it know that when you arrive in the grave and when you arrive in front of Allah, you will not be able to say, I just can't take it. For Allah and the angels knows how much you can take. And when you're, if, Allah, may Allah protect us all from Jahannam, that in Jahannam, the skin will be renewed for the punishment. The skin will be renewed. So not to think that we can get away with this, when we do this, when you, when you indulge in this behavior towards the parent, you have to know that this is a long-lasting tragedy that you're creating for yourself. May Allah protect us from it. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.